it gave me a home. It gave me a centerpiece in my life. And it's just a great place to learn how to be yourself. The Y is a necessary staple in the community. A place for young kids to go, old kids to go, go and work out, have someone to talk to. The Y was one of the few places where people of different religions, different races, could come together and learn that they were first and foremost human beings. William McKinley is the only U.S. president to also have been president of the YMCA. There's very few that last 150 years with that kind of tradition. Canton, Ohio, 1866. Soldiers turned civilians celebrate almost a year without the drums of war. Industry is booming. The town attracts many dreaming of a prosperous future, including Ohioan William McKinley. He was just a boy at the beginning of the Civil War in 1861, and McKinley got into the administration of part of the war by the end, and he was a Brevert major. Uh, Lincoln recognized him. In contrast to the bright prospects of McKinley, many young people in Stark County see a dim future. Community leaders fear a generation in jeopardy. There were so many saloons and so many chances for, you know, a, a, a youth to f be misguided and get off to a bad start in life. A solution is found with the Young Men's Christian Association. Ministers organized the first Y meeting at the Old Methodist Church in Canton in April of 1866. A number of community leaders um, saw the need for healthy alternatives for young people. The Y's early activities include Bible studies, a lecture series, and founding Canton's first public library. At a YMCA debate in 1867, newly arrived attorney William McKinley argues in favor of women acquiring the right to vote. He captivates the audience. The next year, he is elected president of the Y at the age of 25. He was a people person, so it was a really good fit for him. McKinley's biggest accomplishment with the help of industrialist Cornelius Altman is acquiring rooms for the Y in one of the most prestigious buildings in Canton, rent-free for 10 years. It had its first meeting place here in the Eagle Block in the reading room of the library. McKinley is elected prosecutor and keeps stepping up through various offices until he is elected president of the United States for two terms. On New Year's Day, he invites whoever wants to come to the White House in Washington, D.C. And he ends up shaking hands with thousands and thousands of people. So I can't help but feel that he's thinking back to Canton, Ohio always, because that's his love, that's his adoptive home, and the YMCA, where he got his start. In 1886, the association unveils a unique change, adding a physical component to its social, intellectual, and spiritual activities. Soon, the Y is abuzz with so-called muscular Christianity. Pastor Toby. <laughs> so they coined this little funny phrase called uh, muscular Christianity. And of course they were very, uh, very particular about what that meant at the time. It, it meant that you could, you could work out, be fit, and also uh, develop a good moral system for your life. And, and, and whether you're, you follow Christian principles or not, um, the, morals, the moral fabric of who you are and, and, and the fact that you're healthy, I mean, that's just good for all of society. The Y was never meant to be a church but it espoused Christian principles, and those things still exist today. Uh, the Y triangle originally as conceived, the three sides of the triangle were it helped people grow in spirit, mind, and body, and spirit was always at the top. October 1st, 1889, the board discussed um, spending $160 for six months for three YMCA programs teach German mechanical drawing and penmanship. 
And this is very good penmanship. <laughs> Programs and clubs unimaginable to us today flourish in the pictures and written records of the Y from the late 1800s and early 20th century. Get your dessert plate, visualize it in quarters, okay? The needs of our community are always changing and it's great to partner with an organization like the YMCA who's been around for years, who's stable, and who's making an impact in our community. In 1916, a new Y building is constructed with changing community needs in mind. It is the tallest in Canton at the time. Young men drawn to the city for work can live at the Y, enjoying activities, taking classes, and even finding jobs through a Y employment service. There probably wasn't too many places to go that were reputable at that point in time, was like the Young Men's Christian Association. That was, that was a, a, a prime spot for him to go. You can crawl in bed when you're good and tired after working all day, and he had a good spot to get your shower and all. You didn't have a personalized shower in those days on the, on the fifth floor, I know that. It was a common shower, and it, it, there was an incentive that there was a better times ahead looking at the, where he's living. Businessman Dick Kempthorne's father, Jimmy, left a hard life mining and farming in southern Ohio as a young man to find a welcoming place at the downtown Y. The Y helped him lay a foundation for success. But there was a friendship relationship that took place at the Y that normally doesn't take place at two other, many other places. The, the, the Y is a, is a base of, of, of all good, good things that happen to kids when you don't have direction. And you, you get into the YMCA and uh, there was direction there. And there, there were classes in all the different aspects of life. And that probably did more to formulate a lot of us along with our parents as to the right and wrong way of living. Near the turn of the century, the Y recognizes a need in the community and decides to build the first indoor swimming pool in Stark County. And I think one reason why they did uh, decide to get into the, the swimming area is because there was so many young boys, especially in the Canton area, that were swimming uh, illegally in the creeks around town, and uh, which was highly uh, frowned upon by the police. In those days, what they called the it was a fill and draw pool. There was no filtration system. And they just filled it up, and then when it got a little dirty, they dumped it <laughs> and filled it up again. The YMCA has been a great partner for the city of North Canton. And uh, one example is the, the pool that's behind us here. They're now running the North Canton city pool. and. Uh, that relationship actually started back in the 1920s. North Canton's collaboration with the Y is thanks to the generosity of the founder of the Hoover Vacuum Company, William Henry Boss Hoover. He approached the Y to have the community building in North Canton be a part of the Y. It was well over 90 years ago and, and really was the first branch besides Canton. In 1928, the Hoover family and the Hoover Company uh, built the first outdoor pool in the city of North Canton. Um, it was uh, it had about 500 kids a day going through the pool at that point in time, and they leased it back to the YMCA to operate and to run for a dollar a year. And the YMCA ran that outdoor pool up until the 70s when it was no longer viable to continue to operate, and the city of North Canton built the pool behind us today, a dogwood pool. So we have a long history of collaborating and, and utilizing aquatics to serve the community. Good job. Okay, ready? You know, seeing how they progress from the mommy and me up to the pike, up to the, the little kids swim team, up to the high school swim team, it's just really neat to see the progression and how those Y coaches continue to work with them throughout their career. So, you know, some of the best swimmers in the state have come out of the Ys in this area. They do a fantastic job. Learning to swim is a very popular Y memory for many. So, too, are the fond remembrances of camp. Campers today echo the thoughts of generations of kids. What I like about YMCA Camp Tippecanoe is the environment. It's really beautiful and I don't have a lot of that back at home. And the people here, uh, they create a really positive environment, which is really helpful for me. 
young people at YMCA Camp Tippecanoe arrive in cars. But years ago, they found the path to adventure with their own two feet. It really has its history over 100 years ago. The youth and their leaders would literally hike uh, with all of their gear and their food from downtown Canton to the Portage Lakes at Camp Inuenduin and they would stay overnight halfway and then get to the camp and, and have a, a camping experience. Later, uh, the Y sold that property, bought a larger property in Harrison County called YMCA T Camp Tippecanoe. And many people say that the program like resident camping is probably more transformational than any Y program we have just because of the close proximity of the staff and the children for so long. Thanks to many generous donors, thousands of youth can enjoy Y programs like camp, swimming, and childcare. It's because of the Y promise that no one will be turned away due to an inability to pay. Daniel Henderson is a successful business professional, grateful for the financial aid that allowed him to join the Y in the junior high. Growing up, I lived in 23 different homes up until second grade. And from eighth to senior year, it was like this never changed. So being a kid who was displaced all the time, never having a place to call home, this became home. The positive male influence that I got by coming here, I see others were lacking. And when you don't have that, you could go to drug dealers, gangs, anywhere to get that positive male influence. Confidence, camaraderie, ownership of you know what I can create in this arena. Good game. Those are beautiful. I feel very good about my mom, and she has overcome law school, and now she's on the board, and I'm very happy and proud. Lavelle Payne's children are rightfully proud of their mom's accomplishments as a lawyer and YMCA board member. At one point, Lavelle feared she wouldn't be able to make it through law school because she lost her child care provider. The Y came to her rescue with financial assistance to make the program affordable. Child care is currently the Y's largest program, with 1,200 youth enrolled at 23 sites. I know that I couldn't do what I do without the Y, and to think that moms who worked during World War II and back when women weren't even expected to be outside the home were able to benefit from programs like this just goes to show what legacy the Y has not only on our community but on communities nationwide. And the way that we empower our girls and our women is really inspiring. The Young Men's Christian Association has many photos of women and girls participating in programs from the very beginning. They've always been part of it. It's just that membership card, it came out in 1945 and really we are at a new level because of women in this organization. I believe that I am a better mother, I am a better woman because of the leadership that I've been given. I couldn't imagine working and belonging to a better organization. I think the, uh, the YMCA and the programs that they offer are going to be needed more now than they ever were. They bring people together, they build strong families, they build strong communities. The Y has programs that really cater to uh, everyone. Probably when I'm old and 80 and sitting in a rocking chair, I'll be remembering things from the YMCA. Where, where are those pillars? Fairness, respect, responsibility, caring, and trustworthiness continue with those pillars, that foundation, don't change the vision and keep allowing folks like myself to come on through with the scholarship and watch what happens to the world. I love the world. Okay, so happy birthday from Northern Ireland. Happy 150 years and we hope you have a great another 150 years. 